Hey Geeks, I'm Trey Guillotine and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm geeking out over the newest trailer for Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it around so others can join in the conversation. Let's geek out. Already from the beginning of this trailer, it's very clear that they want to kind of show the differences between the light side and the dark side. They show those parallels really well, both focusing on Kylo and Rey and Luke and Snoke. They show Kylo kind of giving into his anger, uh, smashing his helmet. Not sure why he's smashing his helmet, but it does look like he's now, uh, not that he wasn't before, a higher member in the First Order, but now he's even more so. Uh, as well as we see actual Snoke not just the hologram that we only saw in The Force Awakens. We're seeing actual Snoke, and it kind of teases the past of both Kylo Ren's training, uh, Kylo Ren's training under Snoke, and then Luke training Rey. Uh, Snoke mentions that when he found, that when he found Kylo Ren, that he found the, this raw power. And then Luke kind of says something very similar in the trailer that he's only seen this kind of raw power once before and it didn't scare him then, but it does now. And it seems that he's referring back to when he was originally training Kylo and whatever it was Kylo did when he betrayed Luke and the rest of the Jedi trainees, whoever they were, however many there were, uh, that he's talking back to that. And it looks like in the trailer, he Luke is actually kind of afraid of Rey, like he's afraid of her power. And those are definitely the parallels this trailer and I guess the movie are going to be exploring Snoke and Kylo Ren and Luke and Rey. Which is interesting that they're focusing so much on this kind of light side versus dark side because of in the last trailer we heard Luke say that the Jedi must end. It's interesting because kind of a, a popular theory is that the last Jedi is kind of that the last Jedi, the movie, the last Jedi, not whoever the last Jedi is, but the movie, the last Jedi is going to be exploring the idea of gray Jedi, which are neither light nor dark. They kind of take the best traits of both, which goes to show that light isn't necessarily good and dark is isn't necessarily bad, they're just different. And that gray is kind of in the middle. The, the light side definitely, you know, they're the good guys, but they're also very restrictive. They're, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't have emotion, you have to be completely calm. Uh, and then the dark side is the exact opposite, where they're embrace your emotions, embrace your anger and your hatred, and use that in your power. And then the Grey Jedi are kind of, they're very balanced between the both. They do have emotions, both positive emotions and negative emotions, and they're balanced because neither one is stronger than the other. It also shows a scene where there's a space battle and Kylo Ren is in his ship and he's doing his, his stuff. And it's kind of obvious that he probably was always the gift of star pilot. He was the son of Han Solo. Uh, I'm sure Han Solo taught him how to fly when he was a kid. I'm sure he's learned ever since then. Plus he has, you know, the force on his side, which we saw Rey with just a little bit of, a little bit of help from the fourth, just pulling all those really impressive moves when they were escaping Jakku and the Millennium Falcon. So it, it makes sense that Kylo Ren is also a gifted star pilot, but it looks like the way it was edited, the way it was edited and the way it was cut, it does look like Kylo Ren might be killing uh, General Leia. Obviously that would be really sad, but that would also be, it would work in his story arc. I feel like Han and Leia are the, like the last remnants of light for Kylo Ren. And killing Han Solo got rid of one. And doing away with General Leia will do the other, will get rid of the other. So I think that would be just, I think that would make sense for Kylo Ren's story just towards embracing the dark side where, you know, he was kind of just this little whiny kid in uh, Force Awakens. So he'll probably even be even more of a stronger dark side user in Last Jedi. And then if he kills General Leia, completely embraces the dark side, he'll probably be one of the strongest Jedi or strongest Sith we've seen in Star Wars because he just completely embraced not only, you know, deciding that he's going to be, that he's going to be a dark side user, but the fact that he's literally killed the two people that represent the last vestiges of light in himself. Getting away from Kylo Ren and Rey, they also, of course, show Poe Dameron doing Poe Dameron stuff. We didn't really get a lot of what he was doing, but we did see a bit of Finn, who in the in the original, in the first trailer, all we saw of him was he was still, uh, I guess, in a coma from his wounds. 
now he's up. He's he, he had he had this really swanky outfit. It was very like it was a very like well dressed outfit, and then he has a weapon very similar to the weapon to the weapon that the stormtrooper who called him traitor uh, used against him. It looks like he has a weapon very similar to that, and he's actually going toe to toe with Captain Phasma, which that looks really awesome, and I'm really hoping because of that. Captain Phasma is a more important character than she was in Force Awakens because I really feel like she was just kind of a throwaway character. Like she was just kind of there. And that was about it. We didn't see a lot from Captain Phasma. So hopefully that's going to change and we're going to see Captain Phasma be as cool of a character as we were led to believe she was going to be in The Force Awakens. Also, the big thing right now for the last from The Last Jedi trailer is Porgs, or rather a Porg. It's this cute little creature that we're, of course, getting tons of plushies and pops of people. It is a very uh, divisive it issue. Some people love them and some people hate them. Yeah, I think it's I think they're kind of cute, but I'm and some people are just like, oh, it's going to be another Jar Jar Binks. Oh, it's going to be another way to sell toys. And maybe it is. I, I don't know. That's that's the thing I want to know that. Yes, the Porg is very cute. But I'm very curious about what its role is going to be. Like, why is it there? Is there a purpose for this animal? Is does it, or is it something that just crawls up Chewie's shoulder and he's like, "You're going to be my best friend now," and and the Porg and Chewie go on adventures together. I don't know what the purpose of this Porg is going to be, but I'm really curious. I'm really curious to find that out because right now it's just a very divisive issue as people as make assumptions of to what that Porg is going to be, that it's just a way to sell toys, and that it's going to be a stupid character, whereas the other side, and I, I've actually spoken to more people than, mo more people on this side that just love the Porg and think it's adorable and just want to, and want to keep it and want a pet Porg and just, are just decking out their rooms and their places with Porgs. Probably the biggest kind of shocker of a moment from this trailer comes at the end where we see Rey and Kylo presumably speaking to each other. Rey says that she's looking for someone to show her her place in the galaxy. Then Kylo and Ren, and we see a shot of Kylo Ren extending his hand, presumably to Rey. This has brought up a lot of questions of why are they having this conversation? What does this mean? Does this mean that Rey is going to go over to the dark side? Or does it mean that Kylo Ren's going to go over to the light side? I don't think either of these things are going to happen. And I also don't think that conversation is what we think it is. I think it was just edited that way to kind of throw us off to kind of give us some like, oh my God, what's going to happen moments until the movie comes out. I do think it's a little a little bit of a kind of a misdirection from the trailer because we see Kylo Ren and his scar in that shot, but we've also seen uh, Kylo Ren with his scar in another shot, and the scars look very different. One, I don't think this scene actually happens the way it's edited. Or two, I think if it does happen that way, I don't think it's reality. I think it's either going to be some kind of dream or even a force vision that Rey is going to go through on whatever planet she's on with Luke, much like Luke went through the force vision on Dagobah where he saw Darth Vader and he cut off his head and then it ended up being Luke. And I have a feeling that that's going to be kind of the same situation, that Rey is going to be going into force-sensitive cave and she's going to have this vision because who she is in the galaxy is something that's very important to Rey. She wants to know where she comes from. She wants to know who her parents were and she wants someone to answer these questions and then probably seeing Kylo Ren will kind of be like this test of is she going to go with Kylo Ren who might offer easy answers or is she going to go another way that is much more uh, benevolent and will be better for her in the long run. What exactly is the First Order? We know that the Rebellion defeated or as we thought, defeated the Empire at the end of Return of the Jedi. Or if they merely wounded it and then 30 years later, it's kind of finding its strength again and they're still fighting the same fight. Um, but we also know that the Rebellion is no longer called the Rebellion, it's called the Resistance. Did the Rebellion actually win and then establish a new uh, democratic government? and now this First Order is coming back to bring back the Empire and they're resisting it. I want to know the details of this war and of this conflict. I really hope to get answered in The Last Jedi is who Rey's parents are. And I think the trailer actually gives some, not so much clues, but some motivations to figure out the answers. Personally, I always thought Rey was either going to be Luke's daughter 
or she was going to be no one specific's daughter. All of the Star Wars sagas have been about a Skywalker. First it was Anakin, then it was Luke, and then presumably it was going to be Rey Skywalker, and she was going to be Luke's daughter, that he met someone while he was training Jedi, and they had Rey, and then when Kylo and the First Order attacked, uh, Luke hid Rey away on Jakku, and then went into his exile, and that she's going to be Luke's daughter. But given the way Luke is reacting to Rey, um, kind of afraid of her, maybe even trying to kill her so her, her strength of the Force isn't let loose on the universe... Um, I don't think, I don't think she's going to be Luke's daughter. Uh, I think that she's going to be no one specific's daughter. I don't think she's going to be, I don't think she's going to be like Lando's daughter. I don't think she's going to be Han Solo's lost daughter. Uh, I just think she's going to be someone's daughter who maybe a trainee, uh, someone who trained with Luke, uh, had a daughter or even a younger sister and she was strong in the force and she was the only one to survive the attack so he hid her away because of her strength in the force as many points as it brings up and as it, it uh, and as interesting as it was i wasn't that excited about it i was excited leading up to it because they were you know teasing when the trailer was going to be released and it was going to be released and it was going to be released during a sports ball game uh that i of course didn't watch i just waited for it to come online and then i watched it online not i i just wasn't that excited about it it gave some more information as to the movie which i was interested in but i i was nowhere near excited as i was for it as the first trailer for the last jedi which i was like glued to my seats i watched it probably a dozen times over and over and over when it first came out i was so excited i was i was fanboying out about it and then this one was just kind of like okay so i'm i'm not i don't know if the trailer wasn't that exciting for me i don't think that'll be the case for the movie i'm sure the closer we get to that movie is the more anxiety i'm gonna get about it and i'm probably gonna bug my friends to go see it on the premiere night and i'm gonna be really paranoid about being late like it was for the force awakens where we went to dinner before we got to see it and the entire time i was just watching my clock and i was so impatient i was like can we finish eating can we pay the check let's go i don't wanna i don't want to miss this um, that's probably how I'm going to be reacting by the time we actually get to the movie. But right now, not that I'm not excited for the movie right now, the trailer was just kind of not flashy for me. It does raise a lot of questions. It does show off a lot more of the story of the, the ideas and the story arcs that it's going to be exploring. But ultimately, the trailer itself, for me, was just kind of flat. When you're planning your next Wizard World Comic Con experience, make sure you use the discount code GUILLOTINEGEEK online to get 10% off your ticket purchase and use those savings to buy some merch or meet a celebrity. What did you think of the most recent Last Jedi trailer? Let me know in the comments and follow me on all the internets. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it around so others can join the conversation. You can check out my written work at guillotinegeek.blogspot.com. You can become a supporter of my future content by checking out my Patreon. And you can subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun. One, so Captain America, Thor, Hulk.